I'm Simeon Diankov. Um, I was for four years finance minister and deputy prime minister of Bulgaria. Currently, I'm a professor at the London School of Economics, teaching uh, international finance. Um, prior to joining the Bulgarian government, uh, I was for a long time at the World Bank, where I was responsible for um, business reforms, uh, regulatory reforms, enterprise restructuring. And I've worked in the majority of countries in uh, Eastern Europe over the last 20 or so years, uh, especially with countries doing significant reforms. And this is uh, the purpose of being in, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, also, we recently have published a book which uh, summarizes the reforms in other East European country, which may be quite useful for the types of reforms that Ukraine needs to do today. I think every country in Europe is going in the next 10-15 years uh, to move towards more indirect taxation uh, and taxing labor less and taxing capital more. Um, because all of Europe, Ukraine included, my own country, Bulgaria included, um, has an issue with demography. That means that social security taxes have to be lowered over time, including in Ukraine, and the personal income tax, which is a sort of uh, a labor tax, needs to be lowered as well. VAT or some, um, some taxes related to carbon tax, for example, on the, on the environment. Uh, financial transaction tax are the type of taxes most commonly discussed. Uh, as uh, compensatory mechanisms for the reduction of the labor taxes. Another way which is more temporary but can be used in Ukraine over the last two or three years is uh, the next two or three years is to use um, uh, revenues from privatization for example uh, as an additional revenue source and uh, do the tax reforms during uh, the privatization uh, rounds. Ideally, uh, taxes should be adjusted very quickly uh, and radically because once you start phasing in uh, reforms, you never know when the next government is going to come and what would be the political situation, whether you'd have to delay. It's relatively straightforward how privatization is done. There is a lot of experience in other transition economies of how it was done. Our book actually shows a number of examples from uh, Estonia, from uh, Slovenia, from Slovakia, from Bulgaria, from Romania. So it clearly can be done. There is enough knowledge. Uh, so then it ends up being the case in uh, Ukraine that the government or parliament uh, uh, parties simply don't want to do it, which is a different uh, which is a different uh, topic. It may mean that a new government needs to come and that has to be their main, um, uh, main goal to first uh, start the privatization uh, process, maybe with some large attractive um, enterprises, businesses that, uh, that would be uh, of interest to strategic investors, both in Ukraine and uh, abroad. Uh, and if, let's say, within this year you have 10, 15, 20 large uh, businesses that go through this uh, process, I think you'd have enough revenues to consider significant tax uh, reform. Uh, but also you'd be able for next year to learn how the process goes and uh, go through a second round of privatization. Not all large enterprises have to go at once. I think the simplest answer to corruption in the public administration, in the tax administration uh, specifically, is just to have um, very, uh, very simple uh, flat tax uh, type of regime. Because once you have that, once uh, different businesses have the same tax rate and businesses and uh, individuals have the same tax rate, uh, then there is no particular reason to, um, uh, to cheat in the tax administration. In other words, there is no benefit for businesses to, um, to bribe uh, tax officials to uh, somehow give them preferences because there wouldn't be any exemptions, there wouldn't be any preferential tax rates.